Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the top hi-fi systems that I've ever owned. My favorite systems that I've ever heard and owned over the last 20 years. I've owned quite a few systems. I've built quite a few systems. I've managed to hear speakers from almost every brand, amps from almost every brand, DACs from almost every brand, and not, I'm not talking in the Uber you know, six-figure range for a pair of speakers. I've heard speakers that range from $500 up to $50,000 in my home. And I'm gonna tell you guys the absolute best that I've owned, that I've heard, and systems that I've had in my home I'm talking about. I'm not talking about at shows or dealers. So this is going to be my top systems, and I think there's eight of them that I've ever owned over the last 20 years. Let's get started with number eight. So number eight is actually a fairly recent system. It's the Klipsch La Scala uh, with the Pass Labs XA 60.8. And I ran that system with various DACs, and I found no matter what DAC I ran with it, it sounded really good. The La Scala's excel at a live, big, um, wide open sound that is not focused on the bass, but more so that live feel. So it excels in the mid range, the treble, right? And you get some really nice mid bass and a little bit low of the low bass but with the La Scala you really if you want the deep bass you're going to want a sub but I ran it without a sub and I was satisfied in this small room they sounded really good they leaned warm and the vocals just came out and touched you in your listening seat they were really something to experience but at the end of the day they were really too big and unruly for this room having to move speakers in and out and gear in and out to review I had a really hard time moving the La Scala's uh, in and out of this space, but it was the probably the eighth best system I've owned. The Klipsch La Scala's AL5s with the Pass Labs XA 60.8 amplifiers. What about number seven? All right, so the next system, number seven in my favorites that I've owned is the Luxman 590 AX2 integrated amp, that all class A, beautiful integrated with the meters. And I had that paired up to some Sonus Faber Guarneri Traditions, which are the current model in the Sonus Faber lineup, but they came out quite a few years ago. I ran these with a PS Audio Direct Stream DAC, and that was a beautiful system. It was highly detailed. Um, it had a nice, fat, rich sound. The bass on those Guarneris is unbelievably powerful, unbelievably good uh, and dynamic. And that just created such a beautiful plump sound. I love it when a system sounds fat but detailed and it has that kick and energy. Those Guarneri Traditions with the Luxman 590 and the PS Audio Direct Stream DAC was the seventh, uh, my seventh favorite system that I've ever owned, right? Beautiful, beautiful pieces all the way around. Sonus Faber is not an inexpensive speaker but they are furniture grade. And those uh, Guarneri's, I've, I've had every version of the Guarneri. Um, the recent ones are not my favorites, but they still sound amazing. And they paired really well with the Luxman. Let's move on to number six. Okay, so number six goes back a ways. Um, I picked up a pair of Carry Audio 805Cs uh, from Upscale Audio way, way back in the day, and I owned a pair of Sonus Faber Guarneri, uh, the original, right? The homage, homage uh, version of the speakers. Now, I ran that with a Carry Audio 306-200 CD player, which at the time had a really, really good DAC inside. Now, that system sounded organic. It had that tube glow, almost like there was a little reverb tank built into those amps, that brought out that studio space so well. I remember adoring those Guarneri's, the original, and they're still one of my all-time favorite speakers. This was my sixth favorite system, and I had it long, long, long ago. I'm talking maybe 20 years ago. Um, and you really don't see those speakers on the used market. I maybe see 
one pair show up every year or two. They're remarkable speakers in looks and in sound. They, they are not the biggest in the bass department for that mid-range purity and that treble purity though. The original Guarneri's were astonishingly good. And running them with those monoblocks, the 805C tube amps that put out 50 watts of class A power, oh, it was just such a delicious sound. And I had them in a big space and they just sounded remarkable. It's a sound I'll never forget. Uh, let's move on to number five. So number five is again another recent one. It's the Dyn Audio Heritage Specials. When they were paired with the Pass Labs Integrated 250 that puts out 250 watts per channel. And I ran that system for a while with a Cord Cutest DAC. I think it's in the $2,000 range. That had um, world-class treble performance, a clean, pure kick and mid-range and bass that was so tight and clean and controlled, but it had kick, right? And I had that in this room. That was quite the system. And I thought for sure that those Heritage Specials would be my last because I plan on this being my last room for music and seeing that it's not so big, I assume those little bookshelves would have held me over for life, right? But at the end of the day, I heard another speaker that I liked better than the Heritage Special. Um, and those went away. But I'll never forget my time with the Heritage Special, which is still available today, and they're such a beautiful speaker. Um, they're not the easiest drive. They're four ohms or something like 85 or 86 dB efficient. I may be a little off on that, I'm going by memory. But they look beautiful, they sounded beautiful. The Pass Labs Integrated 250 up there with one of the best, if not the best, integrated amp ever made when it comes to build, sound, and style. That was just one heck of a system, and there are days today that I miss that system. Even though I have something that I like better, I sometimes miss the sounds, the house sounds of certain brands. And Dyn Audio has a wonderful sound that is sure to please almost anyone. Those of you who love Dyn Audio, I'm sure you can agree with me. Not everybody will love it, not everybody loves everything uh, the same, but Dyn Audio makes a quality speaker. Uh, let's move on to my fourth favorite system. Okay, number four. Now, this was a few years ago. I had bought a pair from my local dealer at the time when I lived in Arizona of QLN Prestige 3 speakers. They were bought from Arizona Hi-Fi. They were um, a bit understated. They had a lean back. They were made of walnut, this particular pair. They were a two-way speaker, uh, and they just sounded so pure, so analog, so correct, and so musical especially when powered with this crazy integrated amp, the Vinny Rossi L2i SC, which was like a $26,000 integrated, but it came with a really good DAC, the L2 DAC, which is what I ran for the DAC, and it also had a built-in phono preamp, which was actually really, really good now that I'm looking back and comparing it uh, to what I have today. The Vinny Rossi L2i SC was a cost no object integrated amplifier. Beautiful to look at. It used 300B tubes uh, for driving uh, the amp, not for power tubes. It was a solid state amp. The preamp section had those DHT 300Bs, but it was a beautiful integrated amp. Um, and the speakers, the QLM Prestige 3, they were under eight grand at the time. And I remember that sound just being so pure, the purest that I've heard up until that point. They had a nice plump bass. There was no distortion. They were clean, but they also had some of that plumpness and that fat sound, kind of like from the old Sonus Fobbers that I remember, but they were not warm or gooey. They had nice detail. I loved that system. And I think we got rid of all that when we moved, we were prepping to move here or prepping to move in general. I wanted to start from a clean slate, but. Again, another system I'll never, never forget, the QLN Prestige 3 and the Vinny Rossi L2i integrated amp with the L2 DAC. Now we're getting into the top three. Let's see what number three is here in my favorite systems of all time. 
Okay, for number three, it's another recent one. Uh, the original, the standard Fleetwood DeVille speakers. Now behind me, I have the Fleetwood DeVille SQ, which is their upgraded model. So when I first received those DeVilles, I was powering them with a Pass Labs. I believe I still had the integrated 250. I may have had the XA 60.8 amps in, but they were a little warmer. I really loved the vibe of the, uh, the standard Fleetwood DeVilles with a Cord Dave DAC and the amplification being the Pass Labs integrated 250. This was a beautiful world-class system. The sound was um, in the room because of the conical horn and the treble of the Fleetwood. You get that wide open sound, right? And they're not as picky about placement due to this. Um, it sounds good no matter how you set it up, but you can set up these speakers to give you that magical three-dimensional sound stage and that holographic imaging. That was a really beautiful setup. It was costly. But again, one that is close to my heart. I want to get to the top two here. So let's move right into number two. So number two of my favorite systems of all time is what's in the room right now. It's the Fleetwood DeVille SQs, right? The Supreme Quality model, which has an upgraded crossover, full torrified body, um, just beautiful pieces of art, right? and the Luxman 595 ASC powering them, I believe after I've heard so many amplification products and amps and monoblocks and integrateds with these speakers, the best I've heard them is with that Luxman 595 ASC that I have right behind me. Um, DAC wise, this system right here has a pretty snazzy setup for the digital front end, a Lena DCS Lena DAC, a DCS Lena clock, and Shunyata Omega Clock 75 cables to hook those two boxes up. The sound is unbelievably good. It's transparent, it's dynamic, it's holographic, it's a little bit warm leaning. The only weakness I have in here is in the bottom registers. The DeVilles are not big in the bottom, bottom, lower registers of bass. They're good with the mid bass, but if you want to dig low and get window shaking performance, these speakers would probably be better off with a sub or two if you want that. I don't have a sub in here right now. I'm toying with the idea of trying out a nice REL sub. Um, and if I do, you guys will see the review very soon. But this is the second best system I've ever owned or heard. Fleetwood DeVille SQ, Luxman 595 ASC integrated with the Lena uh, DAC stack, I'll call it. Um, beautiful, beautiful sound, um, amazing. So where does that leave number one? And number one is not in my system um, right now. What is number one? I'm about to tell you right now. So the fondest memory of me telling myself, this is the best music I've ever heard. This is the most unbelievable sound I've ever heard comes from a system I owned, shoot, many, many years ago. Um, not 20 years ago, but maybe 10, seven, I don't even know how long ago it was the way time flies, but it consisted of a set of Sonus Faber, again, Guarneri Evolution speakers, which were absolutely beautiful speakers. Um, and I had those paired up with a tube amp an Audio Research VSI 75, which at the time I thought was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And it sounded so gorgeous with the Sonus Faber Evolutions. Um, there's a story that goes with that. I'll tell it at another time, but uh, I remember when those Evolutions left and I was upgrading to a bigger speaker in the Sonus Faber line. And I think I shed a tear because I was so bonded and I so regretted trading those in because the more expensive speaker wasn't nearly as good sounding in my room. The DAC I was running was simple. It was a Cambridge Audio uh, CD player, the 851, and it had a really good DAC inside of it. And I tell you, I had that thing sounding so sweet in my room. A hi-fi friend from the shop came over because he wanted to hear it after you read my review. He couldn't believe the words I wrote and, and he sat and listened to it and he said that's one of the best systems 
I've ever heard. And one of the words he used was fat. There's that, that word again. It was so fat, so present, so detailed, but not in your face. It had a warmth and that base, that lower end, which just filled a room and you could feel it, but it wasn't sloppy or loose. That system was absolutely the best I've heard. And it wasn't even close to being the most expensive, which proves it's not money that delivers great sound. It's synergy, setup, room, what you choose to partner together. That combo of Sonus Faber Guarneri Evolutions and the VSI 75 and that Cambridge DAC. And I think I had Blue Heaven cables throughout from Nordist. Remarkable. I will never forget that sound. Now, I like a sound that is present, that is rich, that is layered, that is deep, that has depth, that has warmth, that has that fat kick about it, right? And also, I like a sound that envelops you in the music, where you could get up from your seat and kind of walk into the sound stage. It's hard to recreate that in a room, but it is possible. I've experienced it on more than one occasion. In any case, I hope you enjoyed my look back at the favorite systems of mine that I've owned uh, and leave a comment below. I want to know what your favorite system has been in your life or even what your current system is now if you're enjoying it. Let us know what you have uh, regardless of price, whether it costs 500 bucks or whether it costs $50,000, $100,000. Let us know what you're listening to that you love. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, share and uh, spread the love. I will see you guys soon with a new video, a new review, new reviews are on the way and in the works, and I'll see you then. Bye guys.